career journeys in the course of satellite communication. We are going to discuss orbital aspects of satellite communication and from this unit we are going to discuss Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So, Kepler gave a three sets of empirical expressions that explain planetary motion. These laws were later used when Newton gave the law of gravitation. Though the given for planetary motion, these laws are equally valid for motion of natural and artificial satellite around the earth or for any body revolving around another body. Here these laws will be discussed with reference to the motion of artificial satellite around the earth. So, let us discuss one by one. So, Kepler is a German astronomer and scientist. He assumed that the orbit is an ellipse with the larger body that is earth at the one focus. This is first law. Second law, the satellite sweeps out equal arcs or area in equal time. Here we need to note for an ellipse this means that the orbital velocity varies around the orbit. The square of the period of revolution equals a constant multiplied by the third power of semi major axis of the ellipse. This is the third Kepler's law. So, before going towards Kepler's law, let us discuss or we will take review of ellipse. So, in the figure we can see the ellipse, it has points minus c comma 0 and c 0. These points are called as foci. Then points with minus a 0 and a 0, these points are vertices. Then the line between vertices is major axis. A is the length of semi major axis and line between point 0 B and 0 minus B is the minor axis. B is the length of semi minor axis. We have equations for ellipse also A square is equal to B square plus C square and the standard equation for this is x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. An area of ellipse is calculated by a is equal to pi a b. So, these are some key points which require to remember. Then let us discuss Kepler's first law elliptical orbit. So, for this law state it states that the orbit is an ellipse. The orbit of satellite around earth is elliptical with center of the earth lying at one of the foci of the ellipse. The elliptical orbit is characterized by its semi major axis, axis A and eccentricity E. So, here you can see this is what we have assumed this is orbit traced by satellite and at the O, there is the center of the earth and this is radius R0 and this is satellite. Here again, apogee, perigee points are marked. So, apogee is the farthest point from the center of the earth. It is a point on the orbit of the satellite and perigee is the nearest point on the orbit traced by satellite. So, A we can rewrite the equation for A. A is equal to apogee plus perigee divided by 2 and orbital period is the time the orbiting body takes to return to the same reference point in the space. Then here to be perfectly geostationary orbit, the satellite 
must have or the orbit of satellite must have following points. First, it must be exactly circular means eccentricity should be 0. It must be at the correct altitude means it should have the correct period. Third, it must be in the plane of equator that is have a zero inclination with respect to equator. If the inclination is not zero or eccentricity is not zero but orbital period is correct then the satellite will be in geosynchronous orbit. So, moving back towards Kepler's first law. So, here we have equation for R0 is equal to P divided by 1 plus E multiplied by cos phi 0. E is the eccentricity. If eccentricity is less than 1, then the orbit is elliptical. If eccentricity is exactly 0, then the orbit is circular. R0 is nothing but the distance of the point in the orbit to the center of the earth. P is the geometrical constant. It is width of the conic section at the focus. Again, we can also rewrite equation for P in terms of AE and H mu. In terms of AE, P is given by A multiplied by 1 minus E square and in terms of h and mu it is given by h square divided by mu and phi is the angle between r0 and the perigee which is also called as true anomaly true anomaly then kepler's second law kepler's second law it is about equal arc sweeps so, the line joining the satellite and the center of the earth sweeps out equal area in the plane of orbit in equal time. That is the rate of acceleration at which it sweeps area A is constant and the rate of change of swept out area is given by dA by dt is equal to angular momentum of the satellite divided by 2m. So, here we can see in the diagram period is given in terms of t1 whenever the satellite was at this position then it moves at this position after time t2. So, it covers area A12 between time T1 and T2. After that again satellite moves further. It reaches at this point at time T3. Then it covers area A34 between time T3 and T4. So, if these two times that is T1 minus T2 minus T1 and T4 minus T3, these times are same. In that case, the area covered within these two times is also same. So, A12 is equal to A34 when T2 minus T1 is equal to T4 minus T3. In this case, the velocity of satellite is slowest at the apogee point and it is fastest at the perigee point. Here the equation for differential area is given. d a is equal to 0 0.5 r naught square multiplied by d phi naught d t multiplied by d t is equal to 0 0.5 h d t. This is differential area swept by vector r naught in time dt. Then Kepler's third law, it is related to orbital period. So, according to Kepler's third law, 
it is also known as law of periods the square of the time period of any satellite is proportional to the cube of semi major axis of its elliptical orbit it is given by equation t square is equal to 4 pi square a cube divided by mu and we mu we know that mu is nothing but kepler's constant and it is given by g multiplied by me so here one important note is given period of revolution is the reference to the inertial space that is to the galactic background not to an observer on the surface of one of the bodies on the earth so in this lecture we have discussed three laws of the kepler's for the satellite thank you